everybody. Welcome to Gathering of the Minds. I'm Lev Poliaka, the uh, chair of the Army Technology Committee, and I am very, very excited to have all of you fine people here today for this event where we've gotten people of different views, but at the same time, they all stand for uh, anti-censorship. And that's the thing, right? Like, I have no idea what you guys think as far as what the world should be like. Probably you guys would get into really big arguments if some of you were uh, left with each other for a very long time. But that's besides the point, because there is another force that we are all fighting against right now, which is the force that seeks to uh, divide us and make us fight amongst ourselves. And the force that seeks to withhold information from us. So as long as we don't worry that much about certain disagreements and can civilly sit with each other and talk about it, then that's it. Then we can work against whatever whatever this thing is. So with that, I want to uh, bring the uh, focus on my wonderful panel over here. We've got Tim Poole, we've got Bill Ackman of Mines, we've got Elmer Goldfeld, and we've got Lionel. And let us start with uh, the person who uh, helped me make this event a reality, Bill Ackman. Thanks, Lionel. Everyone. So my name is Bill Ackman. I founded Minds, Minds.com, Minds.org. Check them out. We're free speech social social network. Open source, encrypted. You get rewarded with digital currency for being active on the app. You can actually exchange that currency for more views on your content or peer to peer with other creators. And we're trying to create a space where creators can make money or living, be independent, and not be censored. So we're taking the stance that the best way to fight hate speech is actually with free speech. So we don't censor anything as long as it's legal in the US. And there's something happening, generally speaking, on the internet with censorship on proprietary surveillance platforms. And people are pretty pissed, so that's why we're here. Tim. Howdy, uh, my name is Tim Poole. I was, uh, I'm a journalist and technologist. I was a founding member of Vice News several years ago. I worked for a company called Fusion for a couple years. And in the past year, I've been entirely independent, producing my content on YouTube and Twitter and other platforms. And I, I don't think I've dealt with the worst censorship. Certainly there are many people I feel have been wrongly banned or taken offline, but I do have some really interesting moments where I was wrong wrongly silenced. I don't think it's that bad, but I think we'll have an interesting discussion, so thanks for having me. Let's go to Eleanor. Uh, hi, I'm Eleanor Goldfield. I'm a um, creative activist, a journalist, um, and a few other things. Um, I have a show that airs on free speech TV. Uh, it's called Act Out. Uh, that's my primary form of my journalism. And uh, of course, as part of the alternative media, I have been um, severely throttled on places like Google and Facebook, so that's why I'm happy that things like Minds exist. Um, so I'm happy to be here. Excuse me, my name is Lionel, one name, like God. I am a uh, practicing lawyer. I This is my 30th year in uh, professional talk radio and the like, so I've been around uh, various aspects of, of, uh, of um, limited speech and the like. I uh, do media and legal analysis. I have my own YouTube platform as well, and I am so glad to be here tonight. Thank you. You're welcome, Lionel. So, from the panelists uh, who are here, what is well, your going sticks in there? Oh shit! shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sticks. Also known as oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm up on the wall, so it's uh, harder to see me. Uh, my name is Styx Hexenhammer 666, real name Tarl Warwick. I wanted my uh, stage name to be as unpronounceable as my real name. Uh, YouTuber, uh, author, editor. Uh, for some time now, I can remember YouTube 10 years ago, and I can remember the dark old days of the censorship that we got at the time uh, from the moralists that existed then. Uh, my concern in the last couple of years has really morphed uh, from maybe a more partisan angle uh, or even a third party sort of independent angle uh, towards simply wanting to combat censorship itself. Uh, I've seen lately it's interesting uh, to see people branching out to other platforms because uh, I've always considered myself a YouTuber. Uh, I then had to branch out to other sites and now I have a, a multi-platform presence. 
uh, that I think it's important for people to actually uh, have in this uh, day and age of the tech world. So can I ask a question real quick? Sure. This is being live streamed on YouTube, right? This is being live streamed okay. from a Stixis account. You guys just swore and the video has been demonetized most likely. <laughs> Uh oh. We're using the enemy platform to combat. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't swear, they'll, they'll turn off your heads. Uh, I'll take full response. Oh, by the way, the demonetization has nothing to do with swearing. It has a lot to do with who you are and what you're saying. Mm. Because you will notice demonetization before you even go public by virtue of the subject matter and who you are. You can be some of the most vile, I, I didn't even jump, jump into this, but you can be the most vile. A uh, person spewing f bombs in in, in sorky fashion, you're okay. But depending upon if you fall into certain categories, I've noticed, for example, one time, just as an example, the YouTube title was "Why I Love This Country," something like that, or "Why Puppies Are Cute." I did it deliberately. Never said a word. I look, and it immediately says, "Not advertise your friends." Have a post it. Why, why puppies are cute, so I... Well, I, I actually agree with you. Uh, I made a video in South Korea called something like visiting a raccoon cafe. Literally just me and a friend for seven minutes laughing and throwing food at raccoons in a South Korean cafe. <laughs> Demonetized, yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys think is the reason that all this demonetization is going on? And uh, furthermore, what have your experiences mm -hmm. been with this uh, demonetization from the very beginning? Like, did you see it growing into something that it is right now with the YouTube purge over time? Or how, how did it all work out for you guys? Well, it's interesting. If you look at the history of places like Twitter and YouTube, I mean, they started out with their roots in free speech. Twitter's slogan was free speech wing of the free speech party. So there is inner turmoil happening within these companies. It's not black and white. Like, they're evil. You know, alternative platforms are good. There are people there who want to do good things. But it seems like the power structure in those companies are more extractive pro-surveillance, pro-censorship, so it's something you know, I don't know, what, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I agree, I think it does, like Lionel said, it has everything to do with who you are and your history and uh, what, you're, what you're talking about. Um, for example, I noticed a friend of mine put up a, a post that said, uh, that said something about Israel, and then it, not only was it demonetized, but they actually started losing subscribers, like YouTube will knock subscribers off and he started getting messages like hey I had to resubscribe to your YouTube channel like four different times he then changed the the name of the video so it, instead of saying like Israel something something it was all one word so it was kind of impossible to like to, to take out and all of a sudden it was like oh this is fine it didn't like it didn't pop up on their scanners I guess as being just Israel because he made it like one long ridiculous word and so it's very clear that what is being censored uh, is is what you're talking about, and particularly if you are part of a part of a larger network, uh, you know, like RT America or like the Young Turks or other alternative media sites, um, mid press news and things like that, like have been really, really lambasted with that sort of uh, censorship on YouTube in particular, but also on other uh, sites as well. I, I want to uh, just point out. I, I have been looking at demonetization for a long time. I've got a friend who's got a big YouTube channel who was demonetized before anyone even talked about demonetization. So, so right now, when they demonetize, you get a little yellow dollar sign, meaning there's limited ads. And my, my buddy, he runs a channel called We Are Change. He was having his ads just turned off. Someone at Google was going in and turning the ads off on his channel. I've been looking at this for a long time. I, I really can't understand how it works because you know they'll claim it's sensitive issues. Okay, if that was the case, then why are mainstream news outlets allowed to talk about, say, the Florida incident or other Las Vegas and run ads on it just fine? Oh, well, they're in a preferred network, things like that. Huh. Yet, then there are people, I actually see uh, channels on YouTube where you actually have a guy in like clan robes and it's running ads and I'm just like, clearly it's not <laughs> politics. I don't know what it is, but perhaps it's us or I don't think it has to do with advertisers being scared. I really can't figure it out. Sticks, what do you think it has to do with? I think that it has to do specifically with issues of a partisan uh, type uh, that certain people, not necessarily even at YouTube, but I think people working with them don't like. For instance, uh, we've seen that they're working now with certain NGOs. They've put out ads literally showcasing the sort of things that they're looking into. Some of these have to do with it literally, explicitly, with the ADL's uh, recent readout. Gun rights appear to be on that list. At the very least, occasionally, you're going to have people censored. 
uh, who are speaking about pro-Second Amendment issues, even if it has nothing to do with what they would even class as they are maybe a politicized uh, NGO, uh, really to do with what they would also classify as hate. I think there are probably people within the big tech firms who themselves have bias. I think that almost, though, takes a, a back seat at this point uh, in a monetization sense to people who are members of third party groups. We saw ultimately it was the legacy media, one my word for you know the corporate media, the corporate media and some of the ad firms uh, really that cracked down on YouTube really as a preface to their uh, late uh, spree of demonetization censorship, the strikes that we've had with the YouTube purge. And we've seen the fruits of that. They now claim that some of the people uh, who were accidentally banned uh, under the YouTube purge, it was just an accident. Literally, uh, you know, these new staff, they didn't quite knew what they were, know what they were doing uh, and that that was the problem. I highly doubt that, to tell the truth. It, it actually kept happening. That after YouTube said that it was a mistake and their moderators were learning, it happened for several more days where more mistakes kept happening, even though, even though they acknowledged it. May I ask, does everybody know what we're talking about with monetization? Is it this? this yeah. is it, okay, good, good. Because, you know, the story started off um, t taking the side of YouTube and Alphabet just for a second. For some reason or another, I don't know why, but apparently Kraft Macaroni and Cheese took great umbrage of having their ads um, start off or begin a, an ISIS beheading video. <laughs> now, I don't know why somebody didn't say with all of the algorithms and all of the, the, uh, the, the and, and I, I, I say algorithm like I know what that was talking about, but you would think somebody would be able to say, hey, this is a video, it has a beheading in here, and it's not a movie. So instead of saying, why don't we do our best to perhaps maybe look at these videos a little bit better, or ask advertisers, do you mind an, an ISIS uh, ad? Uh, who knows? They immediately just said, everybody must fall under this incredible dragnet of overreaction. So it kind of made sense. The other problem is there is no First Amendment against private entities. There is no First Amendment protection against a private company telling you you can't do something. That's their way out. It's not the government. It's just Google, which is the government. <laughs> yeah, it seems like they're missing the point with what most advertisers probably want. So if a computer company wants to sell a computer, realistically, they want to sell a computer to people no matter their political belief, because people need computers. So, but YouTube is assuming that's not true, and they're assuming that the advertisers only want to sell computers to certain type of people. So we're trying to create more of a decentralized ad network where you know there, there's just no censorship in regards to, or, or arbitrary, subjective decisions made with regards to advertising. People should be able to advertise what they want and with who they want when they want to. There, there's something interesting that I noticed in a study that came out a little while a little while ago from Oxford where they claimed that Trump supporters share the most fake news. I just want to preface this with the study was it was a their seed list of news sources was predominantly conservative. So don't be surprised if you find Trump supporters share the most conservative news. But what they also found was that when they clustered, when they created a, a map of the various political factions from right to left, Democrat, Republican, Trump, and the resistance, brand marketing, content produced by brands to sell products, predominantly fell in the resistance category. That's, you know, anti-Trump, Trump impeach, very activisty groups that are very, you know, anti-Russia, that kind of stuff. That's a question. Are you, are you worried about the ads that are taken off your sites or your content being destroyed? I mean, it sounds like you're more worried about the money you're not making or something. I'm not understanding quite. Is this about the content that's not being seen because you're worried about your message is not getting out, or is it because your ads are being wiped There's out? multiple layers of censorship happening. Them? So there's, yeah. there's censorship of content, just a video being up uploaded, and then it being taken down for X, Y, Z reason. But then there's censorship sort of in you know, a not allowing certain content to make money. So taking out, taking the livelihood away from certain people based upon their content, which is a form of censorship. It's, it's more of a financial censorship. So you can't produce your content without that ad in there? For free, let's say. I, I think one of the big problems, I, 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 will, I will say, I think we found the demonetization discussion because I, was, I just pointed that out and that's where we ended up. I personally don't think demonetization is as big a deal as everyone uh, makes it out to be. 
it is an issue because there are a lot of people who don't essentially know how to run, uh, how to monetize outside of the fact that YouTube runs ads on your account. And one of the ways to silence somebody is to strip them of their resources and then eventually they'll disappear. And then they can say, oh, we never censored them, just advertisers didn't want to be on their, on their content. Well, that's actually, I can say uh, legitimately, for the, for, for the most part, it's not true. You know, I've, I've had videos that have been demonetized where people hit me up on email saying, we'd love to sponsor this video. So what made YouTube decide my, that advertisers wouldn't want to be on my video? When an advertiser goes in the network and says, I want to spend $1,000 on my commercial, they'll check a little box saying no controversial videos. There's a, a, a series of selections they can choose from, in which case YouTube will arbitrarily decide, I believe arbitrarily, that my videos or someone else's videos should be in those categories even if they don't fit. And then you end up you know, lacking resources. So what I'm really curious about is when it comes to these uh, NGOs that have been pressuring uh, companies like Google to uh, censor certain things, how much of this is about the money as far as having an organization that has to justify its own existence? And how much is it about a certain idea of what's right and what's wrong and trying to suppress something people believe should be suppressed? So, but anyway, the question that I was just uh, asking the panel was about the intention, let's not even just say NGO, NGOs, but of people in general, people who believe that it's right to censor and suppress and divide for the greater good. Like, uh, Lionel, where do you see the starting from and where do you see that going? Censorship, you asked a great question. Let me see if I can translate. Are you bitching and moaning about making money? Or is it about having your content and your thoughts and ideas completely quashed and removed? The answer is yes, all of the above. You can also be shelled. You can be shadow banned. You can be removed. You can have views drop. You can say, as has been the case, as Mr. O'Keefe and others have uh, shown us, that there are ways to have people not know that they're in a form of video or platform Siberia. And it is absolutely, without a doubt, coming at every level, at every, from YouTube, you name it, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Facebook, I know, nobody cares about Facebook, but it is now being called community standards, or you've been bullied, or you've been banned, and what I believe is it's, frankly, it's a slow and gradual habituation to see how much will you take. I'm in time out. I'm off today. They shut me down for 24 hours. And people just go, okay, I, I, like we're just, we're, we're just sheep that just take this because people say, well, after all, nobody, you don't have a right to this. You don't have a right to, that's where this is. You don't have a right to Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is. Start your own. Be a mind. This isn't the government. And the worst part about it is not so much this, but the number of people that I know who are completely you know, just oblivious to it and who don't care. They're nation. They're bored. They're there. Well, you know, whatever it is, it's that social. Difference. So that's the problem too. Inaction as well as action. Sticks, what do you think? I think that ultimately the NGOs don't really care about money. It's not It's not so much about any sort of income for them. It's really about suppressing opinions that they don't like. I think they're mostly, though, working on behalf of other third parties. What I've said, what I think is happening, if we look, for instance, at the attacks on even, you know, you would think of, of, of corporate groups, essentially, Infowars. It is a business, fundamentally. It may be one that's entertaining. It's not the same as CNN, but it is a, a for-profit, multi-million dollar business. We have a strange situation now where nobody bats an eye at the fact that CNN would come out, do a write-up, an expose, so-called, on Alex Jones or on Infowars and say, oh, uh, we're encouraging YouTube to kick them off the platform. We got this video struck down, ha-ha. Here's, we submitted some others that were similar uh, you, you know, you understand what the actual goal is, and, and for them, it's about money. For them, it's, hey, there's a competitor on YouTube who has more support, more grassroots support than we do, we CNN, in this fight. We want to kick them off. The NGOs are just sort of a tool, I think, at that point. Now, one that has managed to get in with YouTube, convince them that they're noble, or convince them, possibly, behind closed doors, hey, if you don't work with us, we're going to get your platform screwed. Uh, because we have power, we can label you a uh, haven for bigots. We can keep talking about this non-existent army of skinheads that supposedly is using YouTube uh, to really coerce people. I saw earlier 
the main man for Right Wing Watch, Jared Holt, uh, was uh, sharing out an article. And this was very funny to me. Uh, this is something that needs to be said. I was going to speak about it in a video, but here's as good a place as any. He's sharing out an article that says, oh, the alt-right, you know, the, the boogeyman, really, of modern culture is collapsing. And I thought to myself, if, if the extremists, so-called, according to him, are collapsing, then why exactly do we need more censorship on these websites? Because I'm getting a totally different story. The ADL is telling me that extremism is on the rise, already prevalent, and that it's basically being sheltered by these online sites. I haven't seen that as a YouTuber, as a content creator. I simply don't see, I suppose, what they're seeing. But I think ultimately, it's in partnership with groups within the old guard, the corporate media, because they're being outcompeted by people like everybody on this panel tonight. I, I have to disagree with some of that. So I used to be a director at various nonprofits dealing with fundraising. And I can tell you the moment that I decided I, I probably wouldn't do this anymore. I, I can't name the, the, the company because I'll probably get sued to oblivion. But it was around the time the Deepwater Horizon disaster happened and they wanted us to fundraise, and they wrote us a pitch that was a total lie. They were lying about the scale of the disaster. They were lying about the amount of crew being poured to the ocean. And I said, why? You don't, you don't need to lie. Why, why would you expect me to lie to our, uh, potential donors? And that did not sit very well with them. Hmm. When I look at these companies that are in the Trusted Flagger program, you know, I think most notably we have the Southern Poverty Law Center and the Anti-Defamation League, they need to justify their existence. When their job is done, they stop. They go away. But that's not what's happening. They keep saying it's getting worse and you need to donate. Because if they tell you that extremism is going down, they tell you that you don't need us to police YouTube, then why would anyone give them money? They'd be out of a job.